Amen. Brother Lord, it's your turn. We come right on. We're very glad to have Brother Lord preaching for us this morning. Amen. You made it. Turn in your Bible to the first chapter of Matthew. How much time I have, Brother Lord? As much as you want. Well, like Elizabeth Taylor says to her last husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have the opportunity to be here. And it's a great privilege to be here. I'd like the passage we read while uh, Brother Val before it took the offering. Before that, in that eighth verse, it asked a simple question. Will a man rob God? I want to ask you a question, two questions. And I don't want you to raise your hand. I don't want you to shake your head. I don't even want to know the answer. But I want to ask you that you ask yourself and God. Answer to yourself and God. Have you been robbing God? I want to ask you again. Have you been robbing God? My other question is, do you intend to keep on robbing God? That's right. Seventy-five years as a church. And a church that has reached out to many people. Amen. This church has been a blessing to a lot of people. And are still being a blessing to a lot of people. Amen. The influence of this church has reached out into places that most of you probably have never heard of. But nevertheless, it's like the riffle on the water that keeps it going. And God is blessing. Many, I don't know how many such we read out here, were licensed and ordained as ministers from this church. Now that doesn't mean that they have done all the uh, good things for the church or anything like that. <coughs> Without the church backing them, it wouldn't amount to much. Amen. Only eternity will reveal what this church has done to the Lord. And I'm sure, and I speak for myself, I'm sure I could have done better. I know I could have done better. I've never preached a sermon, but when I look back on it, I could see where I could have done better. Never a day passed what I could have done better. I want to do better. Amen. So much for that. Let's read our text. In the first chapter of Matthew, <coughs> in the 21st verse, we'll read one verse. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I got a little paper called the Regions Beyond. And in one issue, I think it was the last issue, there was a little article in there by Curtis Hudson. And I took some of that article out to read to you this morning. Jesus did not come to help you save yourself. I want to read that again. Jesus did not come to help you save yourself. I remember when we lived in Wiggins, uh, I had a good friend there who ran a grocery store. And at least 50 times and maybe more, he said these words to me, Brother Moore, I can't save you and you can't save me, 
we've got to save ourselves. And every time I tell it, you're, I agree with you on the first part of that, but I don't agree with you on the last. You can't save yourself. Right. Jesus did not come to help you save yourself. He came to save sinners. Amen. He did not make the down payment and say, here's the payment book. You make sure you keep up the payments. Right. He didn't do that. He paid it all. Amen. I like that song. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin and left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I didn't wash it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. He paid it. He did not come to show me how to save myself. Jesus didn't come to show me how to save myself. He came to save me. He did not come to help me save myself. He came to save me. And Curtis said, keep your hands off of it. Don't touch it. Accept it like it is. Receive the free gift from God Almighty and be saved. Amen. And I might add to what he said, no one will ever be saved who doesn't let Jesus save them. Amen. I remember Sister Baker, Brother David's sister, telling me about a lady who was shedding butter beans on her back porch. And she was singing a song, uh, There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from a man's vein, and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty state. Amen. Man. And she said uh, that she bowed her head and accepted the Lord. And Jesus forgave her. And she was saved. <laughs> and I remember what the lady said about it. said, thank the Lord. She quit trying and trusting. Amen. Jesus is unlike any person that other person that ever lived or ever will live. He's unique. There's no other like Him. He is the only begotten Son of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus has had the greatest impact on the human history of any person Amen. that ever lived. He is God, one of the adorable trinity. And He was in the beginning with God. Amen. And He indeed is God. Amen. And the Bible says that He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He's a hub around which everything that is Christian turns. Yeah. It doesn't matter how religious you get, or how many good resolutions you make, or how many good deeds you do if you leave Christ out of it. It's all in vain. Amen. Jesus said in the 6th verse of the 14th <coughs> chapter of John, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Somebody asked, what about these people on these islands in the Pacific or in the Atlantic or somewhere else that never heard of the name of Jesus. What about them? All I know is what the Bible says, and that is that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. There's no other way. Ignorance is not a way. There is no other way. God hath appointed him there of all things. He is the theme of the whole Bible. The Old and New Testament alike. 
He is the seed of the woman mentioned in the third chapter of Genesis. He is the great I am of the burning bush that Moses saw on the backside of the desert. Abraham called him the judge of all the earth. He's a plan of renown spoken of in Ezekiel. And uh, to him, the greatest songs that there was ever sung have been written about him. I, I got a few of them listed here. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. There is no such thing promised in the Bible as grace apart from Jesus Christ. That's right. God has never said to have any grace apart from Jesus Christ. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrow fear and drives away his fear. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For the all the pleasures of sin I resign. For oh, the name of him who died to set my spirit free is the sweetest name on earth to me. Okay. When it seemed I'd surely fall upon that blessed name I call, it's the lovely name of Christ, Amen. my Lord. Okay. And there are many of them. <clears throat> I want to see my Savior, first of all, Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. Everyone, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? No more important question will ever be asked you than are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Amen. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. <coughs> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And my friend, if you have Christ, the Bible says you have life. Amen. But the Bible also says that he that hath not the Son hath not life. Amen. It was He, Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, who set the great example of forgiveness when He hanged on the cross. When He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Those who crucified Him those who draw the nails in his hand, those who spit on him and crowned him with a crown of thorns, he prayed, Father, forgive them. And he set an example there for you and me that we forgive. Amen. The Bible says that his name is above every name. Now you read through the history of mankind and you'll find some of the great men and you look at it and go on in the history and you'll find there were cruel and murderous men. Mm -hmm. Some of the men who history blessed their name so high were men who caused thousands of people to suffer and die. Amen, that's right. But their name is not a stone. Their name is not held higher than the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. The Bible also says that at His name, every knee shall bow. Amen. And every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. A person may hear His name. Now I heard I don't know if a preacher may be, I don't know if a preacher what he heard, but it might not be so. But I heard that 
there was some television station in the Northwest affiliated with the ABC network that if anybody uses the name Jesus on those stations, they beat it. Don't <coughs> let that name go out over the air on their station. Like I said, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'll tell you one thing. A person can with a stiff neck and a hard heart walk away from the name of Jesus in this life, but there will come a time when they must bow That's right. and say amen. Amen. To Jesus right. confess his name. Every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. I will mention his name and acrostic. Let each letter of his name represent something concerning him. The first one I mentioned is the justice satisfied. No matter what I say, it's not going to be enough. I can't say enough about him, but let's try. Justice satisfied. God hates sin. Sin separated man from God. And it's God who said in the day, told Adam in the day you sin, in the day you eat of the forbidden fruit, you'll die. <coughs> God hates sin. Sin must be punished. But you and I couldn't pay for our sins. How on earth would we start about it if we were to? If we thought we could pay for our sins, how can we pay for them? We can. I'll tell you somebody who did. Jesus paid yeah. for our sins. The Bible said, Lo, God hath made man upright, but they have sold out many in vision. The soul that sinneth, it shall die, Ezekiel said. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world, and death by sin, and sin passed upon all men, for all have sinned. If it's a sin, man has done. No matter what it is, if it's a sin, man has found a way to do it. Man has not only sinned when he's been tempted, he has sought out ways to be tempted. Man has sinned and come short of the glory of God. He didn't just sin when it was convenient. He sinned when it was inconvenient to do it. Lies have been told when the truth would have fit much better. Enmity. But Jesus destroyed that enmity. He went to the cross and bore our sin in His own body on the cross. He paid for my sin. I couldn't pay for it. Eternity in hell is what it would have required for me to pay for it. The, en the E we let represent the enmity he destroyed. The enmity between God and man. The enmity between Jew and Gentile. I, I think it's in the 30s when some of the archaeologists Dick in the, in the old city of Jerusalem came upon a buried wall. And they found on that wall let no Gentile, no man, man of the nation go beyond this point on pains of death. The Samaritan woman told Jesus, the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritan. The Jews looked down their noses and hated the Samaritan. 
They consider themselves bad. But Jesus died on the cross and destroyed that enemy. Today, there is no difference. Each person comes to God on the same term. Each person comes to God through Jesus Christ. He also destroyed the enmity between God and man. God hated sin and man had sin. But Jesus paid for it and he said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The S we let represent the suffering he endured. Amen. I can't describe the suffering that Jesus went through. His, his suffering, the nails hurt his hands. The thorns hurt his brow. When he was, oh, the agony he went through, he came to his own. And his own received him not. Amen. The rocks rent. The veil of the temple was torn. But there's a song that says the pain in his heart was the hardest to bear. The heart that was broken for me. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? <coughs> No doubt in my mind of what was one of the greatest things he suffered when his heavenly Father whom he loved and whom he did so much to honor <coughs> turned his back on him and let him die. You know they said that he saved others himself. He cannot save he didn't come to earth to save himself. He didn't come to earth to avoid suffering. He came to earth to save others. Amen. I have a lot of things which I'm thankful for. And one of them is that I'm in those others that he came to save. You know if it said in the Bible that Jesus died to save John Albert Moore, Sr., there might be a hundred John Everett Moore seen in the world. He didn't say it, he said, whosoever will. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm one that would. <clears throat> you are that represent a unity he established. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all in this together. If you're a child of God and I'm a child of God, we're in this together. We'll join heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. We have unity with our Heavenly Father. We're laborers together with God. <coughs> My last thought is the salvation complete. My last thought. Salvation complete. I don't know how you feel about it. But I know I'm not what I ought to be. And I know that seventh chapter of Romans fits me to a T. One day, Brother Paul, this body will be made like unto his glorious body. Amen. Amen. One day, if I die before Jesus comes, I'll come out of the grave on you and spiritual body Amen. made like unto him. It would be this same body. This body would be resurrected, but it will be changed. <coughs> Should I live until Jesus comes, it will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll go off together to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. If you're here this morning, uh, if you're here now, <laughs> you've never come to know Jesus as your perfect Savior. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. While our pastor stands out front, while let's have a congregational song, invitational song.
while Christians pray, while God looks on, while the Holy Spirit moves, won't you move? May God bless you. 307. 307.